Hi Poker fans, Harry here and welcome to my breakdown of the ninth episode of the Aim to Be a Pokemon Master series, the episode Rocket Revengers and this episode was crazy. But before we get into the episode, don't forget to subscribe, also leave a like and comment down below and let's get in to the video. So of course, spoiler warning for the episode Rocket Revengers and there was a lot of references in this episode so strap in. So the episode starts with Ash and the gang walking through a forest and they see a deli bird fly overhead which almost knocks into Latios who has been of course following Ash and the gang um, in every episode of the Aim to be a Pokemon Master and it was following of course in its invisible form that's why Deli Bird and Ash and the gang don't see Latios and we quickly learn that Deli Bird is actually after Team Rocket and this Deli Bird is under ownership of a Team Rocket Scout and it was basically um, Team Rocket Scout was used to uh, recruit of course members of Team Rocket which Jesse, James and Meowth of course bumped into in the Johto Saga as well as of course this Deli Bird and that episode was the episode Do's and Don'ts and this was basically Team Rocket learned that they hadn't paid the Jews um, to enter into Team Rocket, so they weren't actually part of Team Rocket. However, Deli Bird um, followed the uh, Team Rocket trio throughout Johto, where it collect um, their Team Rocket Jews, and um, of course it, uh, of course the Jews to pay for them to be in Team Rocket, which he, they eventually um, made enough money to rejoin Team Rocket at the end of the Johto saga. And Delibird's last appearance was in the episode Memories Are Made of Bliss, which was the last episode of the Sinnoh um, saga, and it informed the Team Rocket trio of their new mission to travel to Unova. Of course, even though the Delibird told them of their new mission, this was uh, presented um, from Giovanni who also has a kind of minor appearance in this episode as well. But before we get on to him, Deli Bird presents the Team Rocket trio with box lunches, which is probably a reference to the episode Brock, Silent and the Forest Witch, um, where Silent talked about box lunches, and I actually did a breakdown of that episode, which I will link up in the cards above, so check that out if you haven't already. And these box lunches managed to satisfy Team Rocket's hunger, as of course they were hungry before Deli Bird showed up, and they have been hungry in every episode of this series. And then Deli Bird reveals that he has all of Jesse and James's past Team Rocket Pokemon, and this is insane. But before we get into their past Pokemon, the intro plays, and in the Pokemon section, it shows Ash's Carlos team. So the first Pokemon shown of Ash's Carlos's team is Froakie, which is Greninja's pre-evolved form, and that's in the episode Lumu City Pursuit, where it decided to join Ash's team, um, being the first uh, Pokemon Ash caught um, in the Carlos region. And then we see Halucha in the episode The Forest Champion, which is the episode it decided to join Ash's team. Of course, Ash not really catching it just the Pokemon wanting to join Ash's team exactly like Froakie. And then we see Noibat, which is Noivan's pre-evolved form, in the episode A Not-So-Flying Start, which is the episode in which Noibat hatched from an egg, and also the episode that it, again, like Halucha and Froakie, decided to join Ash's team. Next up is Talonflame from the episode A Legendary Photo Op, which was the episode that it evolved from Fletchinder um, into Talonflame whilst battling the legendary bird Pokemon Moltres. And this was the first um, of Ash's colors team shown in this section that Ash actually caught without it just deciding to join Ash's team. And then last but not least, we see Gudra from the episode the moment of Lumio's truth, which is the episode in which it battled against Clements, Heliolisk and Luxray, actually managing to beat Luxray for Ash to get his fifth Carlos Gym badge. And then the intro ends with the title card of this episode showing Meowth instead of Pikachu, because this episode is all about Team Rocket. 
So, back to the actual episode. The reason that these Pokemon have returned is because Giovanni wants Team Rocket to manage these Pokemon again. And this is revealed by a golden Giovanni statue um, produced by Delibird. And after Delibird um, gives Team Rocket this message from the golden Giovanni statue, it flies away. And let me say, there are a lot of of Pokemon. Both Jesse and James now have six Pokemon each, which is 12 Pokemon. So let's revisit the episodes of these returning Team Rocket Pokemon and strap in because this is going to be a long one. So let's go over Jesse's Pokemon first. So first up we have Surviper, whose first appearance was in A Tale with a Twist, and its last appearance was in the episode Memories are made of bliss. So in Tales with a Twist, that was in the Hoenn arc of the anime, and Memories are made of bliss was the last episode of the Sinnoh anime. And then we move on from that into Yan Mega, who first appeared as a Yanma in the episode The Thief That Keeps on Thiefing, shortly evolving in that very same episode. And its last appearance was exactly the same as Survipers in the episode The Memories Are Made of Bliss. And next we have Swoobad, who first appeared in the episode Enter Iris and Akshu, which in the, was in the Unova part of the anime, and its last appearance was in the episode Team Rocket's Shocking Recruit, which it, again was in the Unova part of the anime. And also, we see Frelish, who first appeared in New Places, Familiar Faces, where it was revealed that Jesse had caught a Frelish sometime before this episode, and its last appearance was in the episode Best Wishes Until We Meet Again, one of the last episodes of the Unova anime. And lastly, we see Gorgeist, which debuted as a punkaboo in the Bamboozling Forest. And it later evolved into a Gorgeist in the episode A Festival Trade, A Festival Farewell, which was the episode in which uh, Jesse traded it away, but through that trade it evolved, and then Jesse wanted it back. Um, and I think that's how um, Punkaboo evolves, you need to trade it away, um, and that's how it evolves, which is why it evolved in the anime. And its last appearance was in the episode The First Day of the Rest of Your Life, which was one of the final episodes of the Carlos anime. And with Jesse's Pokemon out of the way, now on to James's returning Pokemon. So his first Pokemon is Mime Jr., who debuted in the episode Sweet Baby James um, in the Hoenn part of the anime, where he visited one of his old holiday homes that his family used to own, and the Mime Jr. at the holiday home decided it wanted to join James's team, and it became a kind of Team Rocket Pokemon. And its last appearance was in the episode Come In Fall Festival Circle, which was um, one of the um, final uh, episodes of the Sinnoh anime. And next up we have Carnivine, which debuted in the episode Two Degrees of Separation, and it was actually caught by James when he was just a boy. Um, again, another past Pokemon from James's childhood, which was seen in the Sinnoh anime, and its last appearance again was also in the Sinnoh anime, the final episode, Memories Are Made of Bliss. And then we move on to his Unova Pokemon, which first up is Yomask, who first appeared in the episode Battling for the Love of Bug Types. And its last appearance um, in the anime was in the final episode of the Unova anime, The Dream Continues. And also, Amoongus, another of James's Unova Pokemon, um, first appeared in the episode New Places, Familiar Faces, just like Jesse's Frillish. Um, and it was revealed that James had caught um, this Amoongus sometime prior to New Places, Familiar Faces, but this was the first episode we saw it in, just like Jesse's Frillish. And its last appearance was in the episode Best Wishes Until We Meet Again, just like Jesse's Frillish. And next up is Inke, who first appeared in the episode A Battle of Aerial Mobility, which was the first episode Ash actually caught his Fletchlin. 
and its last appearance was in the episode Battling with a Clean Slate, which was one of the final episodes of the Carlos anime. And lastly, we see more Pico, which first appeared in the episode Sobin Sobble, which was one of the first episodes of the um, Gala anime. However, James actually caught more Pico, though, in the episode Take My Thief, Please, and its last appearance was in the episode Partners in Time, which was the episode where Ash finally defeated Leon. And as well as all these Pokemon returning physically, Team Rocket also reminisce about their other Pokemon that they released or left um, in the care of others. And since we were on about James' Pokemon, let's go over his other Pokemon first. So first up is Weezin, who first appeared as a coffin in Pokemon Emergency, and this was his OG Pokemon, his first uh, Team Rocket Pokemon that he was revealed to have, and it later evolved in the episode Dig Those Diglett into, of course, Weezin, and um, that was the same episode that uh, Jesse's Ekans evolved as well, but more on that later. And its last appearance was in the episode A Poached Ego, um, in which it was escaping with a herd of um, coffin um, into safety away from a Pokemon hunter. And then we see his next Pokemon, which is Victory Bell, who first appeared as a Weaving Bell in the episode um, The Breeding Center Secret. And it later evolved into Victory Bell in that very same episode, with its final appearance being in the episode Here's Looking at You, Elekid, where it fell in love with another Victory Bell after being traded with that Victory Bell that it fell in love with. However, it was released by the person that James traded it away to, and James released this Victory Bell that his Victory Bell fell in love with, and they came into contact with each other and then ran away together. I don't know if that ever makes sense. You just need to watch the episode. Here's looking at you, Elekid, to fully understand what I was just talking about. So next up is Chimeko, who first appeared in the episode Who's Flying Now? Um, which was in the Hoenn part of the anime. And its last appearance was in the episode... Um, Sweet Baby James, which was the same episode that he got Mime Jr., but in that episode he left Chimeko in the care of these um, old people that were under the care of his old holiday um, family home, but he got Mime Jr. from there. And it also appeared as a fantasy in the Sinnoh anime in the episode The Bells Are Singing. And next up is Cacnea, who first appeared in the episode A Post Ego, which was the same episode that he released his Wheeze in, and its last appearance was in the episode Once There Were Greenfields, where he left it in charge of the grass-type gym leader in Sinnoh, Gardenia, as it appeared in a flashback in Barry's Busting Out All Over, where Barry explained to James that he fought Cacnea when he challenged Gardenia and that the reason that James had left it in Gardenia was to master uh, Drain Punch, I think, which um, Barry explained that Cacnea had mastered that move. And lastly, we see Marini, which first appeared in the episode The Sun, The Scare, The Secret Lair, um, which was basically when it uh, clamped down on James's head, and James... Uh, started to resemble a Marini, so Marini fell in love with him and decided it wanted to be his Pokemon. And its last appearance was in the episode All Out, All of the Time, when Team Rocket returned to Alola and they accidentally landed um, where their Alola Pokemon were after getting blasted off by, of course, Ash's Pikachu. But that covers all of James's Pokemon. So now we have Jessie's Pokemon, which she was reminiscing about. So first up, we have Arbok, which first appeared as an Ekans in the episode Pokemon Emergency. Again, it was um, Jessie's OG Team Rocket Pokemon, and it appears in the same episode as um, James's Coughing. And it evolved in the episode Dig Those Diglett, the same as uh, James's um, Coughing, how it evolved into Weezing in that episode, because they just wanted their Pokemon to evolve uh, so much, and those Pokemon felt that, and they just evolved because their trainers wanted them to evolve. 
And its last appearance was the same as um, James's Weezin in the yes episode A Poached Ego, um, which was when it uh, was escaping with a l whole load of Ekans um, into safety away from a Pokemon hunter. And the next of Jessie's Pokemon is her Lickitung, which first appeared in the episode Princess vs. Princess, which is basically there was a contest to find uh, the princess of this town, and uh, Jessie uh, participated in it uh, along with Misty, and Lickitung, I think, was um, used in one of those rounds when she caught it in that episode. And its last appearance was in the episode tricks of the trade when Jesse accidentally traded it for Wabafet and of course never traded back and Wabafet became an iconic Team Rocket Pokemon. And next up is Dustox which first appeared as a worm pool in the episode all in a day's wormhole, um, which is when she wanted to catch it as she saw May catch one to hopefully evolve her into a butterfly. But it later evolved into a cascoon in the episode Corfish Out of Water, finally evolving into a dust ox in Seeing is Believing. And of course, she wanted it to be a butterfly, um, and when she it evolved into a dust ox, she didn't like it until she learned to love it and it became one of her favourite Pokemon to use. And its last appearance was in the episode Crossing Paths and it was basically a release similar to um, Ash's release of his Butterfree when it found a dust stocks that it wanted to mate with and, it was, and they were migrating to somewhere else so Jesse released it to be with um, its mate. And Dustox also appeared in the episode Jumping Rocket Ship in a flashback that me I've had. And lastly is Mimikyu, who first appeared in the episode Loading the Decks, um, where uh, Team Rocket came into contact with it when it found Ash's Pikachu. And of course Mimikyu attacks Pikachu because Pikachu is beloved by the fandom and Mimikyu wants to have that love, which is why it dresses like Pikachu. But it was first caught um, by Jesse in the episode First Catch in Alola Ketchum style, which is actually the first episode where Ash caught an Alola Pokemon being his Rowlet. And its last appearance was in the episode All Out All of the Time, which was um, the same episode uh, James came into contact with his um, Marini which is when they returned to Alola and accidentally landed where their Alola Pokemon were after being blasted off by um, Ash's Pikachu. However, there is one Team Rocket Pokemon that is not present in either the Pokemon that has been given back to them by Giovanni or the Pokemon that they released or gave to other people. And that Pokemon is Gyarados. And that is the only Pokemon that has been in Team Rocket's party for multiple episodes that has not appeared at all. And it doesn't appear later in the episode either. And I think it's because James couldn't control this Gyarados in any way and it made them blast off. But if they ended in a similarly bad way with uh, Victory Bell, then I don't know why Gyarados just doesn't exist, but maybe they just don't have any happy memories with Gyarados as they only appeared in a couple of episodes. And of course, it couldn't appear um, back in their returning Pokemon, as of course, um, they didn't give this Gyarados to Giovanni. But I just think that's a cool little thing to note. But now we actually get into the plot of this episode. So that's basically all the Pokemon out of the way, we can finally get into the story of this episode, which is with all of these Team Rocket Pokemon returning um, after they had left them with Giovanni over the years, they form a plan to catch Pikachu. And Meowth actually name drops the title of this episode, calling this plan, calling themselves the Team Rocket Revengers. And as Team Rocket discuss their plan to capture Pikachu, their theme plays in the background. As well as while they're discussing this plan, they present it in the same way that they say their Team Rocket motto, which I just think is cool. And as we rejoin Ash and the gang, we see and learn Team Rocket's plan play out. And their plan is to use Mime Junior to trick the gang into thinking that Mime Junior has betrayed Team Rocket and is trying to turn them in to an Officer Jenny. 
which is similar to Meowth's plan in the Pokemon series Black and White from the episodes from Meowth's crafty tactics to Battle for the Underground, where he was kind of pushing Ash and the gang into a way where they could capture all of their Pokemon. So you think Ash would have learnt by now not to trust any Team Rocket Pokemon, even if they say that they've turned against Team Rocket, but he does trust uh, Mime Jr. because he just wants to believe all Pokemon are good. And we see, to convince Ash and the gang that Mime Jr. has betrayed Team Rocket, Mime Jr. mimics exactly the face James told um, Mime Jr. to use to trick them. And this makes sense as Mime Jr. is the Mime slash Mimic Pokemon, so Mime Jr. would mimic uh, what to do to uh, trick Ash and the gang. And literally, Mime Jr. evolves after learning Mimic. So it would make sense that he could learn this move and mimic a sad face so the gang would trust it. That with Ash and the gang just loving Pokemon, they would believe Mime Jr. completely. And fortunately for Team Rocket, that goes to plan. However, to drive it home and make sure that plan works, they show up to Ash and the gang and say that Mime Jr. has betrayed them and is selling them out to an Officer Jenny. Setting in motion for the gang to trust Mime Jr. even more, as before, Pikachu was a bit wary of it, realising it was Team Rocket's Mime Jr. Even though Ash and the gang didn't realise it was Team Rocket's Mime Jr. until Pikachu basically told them, but this sets in motion for them to believe this Mime Jr., including Pikachu. And also, with them completely trusting Mime Jr. now, they'll follow it right to the supposed officer Jenny, but they'll actually walk directly into Team Rocket's trap. And of course, um, when they confront Mime Jr. for the first time, uh, Ash's Pikachu sends Team Rocket blasting off again. But this is all part of their plan. But before we actually get on to them moving towards the Officer Jenny, thinking about the Officer Jenny, Brock asks for Mime Jr. Um, to tell it when um, Mime Jr. finally reaches the Officer Jenny that he is a hero, to which Krogunk poison jabs him and Misty pulls his ear, something that they always do whenever Brock flirts with a girl in this series. And most recently, they did it in the previous episode, Get into the heart of it all, uh, which I actually did a video breakdown of, which I will link up in the cards above, so check that out if you haven't already. And with Ash and the gang following Mime Jr.'s directions, they run directly into Team Rocket's trap. And with them falling into Team Rocket's trap, they run into Team Rocket Pokemon, first being Amoongus and Yamega, then Frelish and Yamask, then Carnivine and Gorgais before Pikachu finally runs into the rest of, the te of Team Rocket's Pokemon. But of course Team Rocket's plan depends on the gang um, splitting up which is why they've um, um, had Pokemon at different sections so the gang will split up and eventually will be just left with Pikachu and um, taking Mang Jr. to see the Officer Jenny. And this plan plays out perfectly for Team Rocket with Brock staying behind to stop the Amoongus and Yamega with his Krogunk and Ludicolo. Now Krogunk first appeared in the episode Jimbalaya where Team Rocket used it when they set up a fake gym to steal Challenger's Pokemon. And its last major appearance was in the episode The Final Battle of Legend, which is when um, Ash and the gang wanted to stop Team Galactic. And its last minor appearance was actually in the previous episode, getting to the heart of it all. And Ludicolo's first appearance was as a Lotad in the episode Lotad Lowdown. And it later evolved into Lombre in Take the Lombre Home. And then from Lombre it evolved into Ludicolo in the episode Once in a More While, with its last major appearance being in that same episode. And its last minor appearance was in the episode Grating Spaces. And Brock's Ludicolo is seen to be a bit like Brock, a bit of a flirt, but also it really likes dancing, which is what many Ludicolos like. And Brock stops Amoongus and Yamega by making Ludicolo use Tita Dance in time with him singing to Shiki's Paradise, which is Brock's um, 
a Japanese name, which actually last played in the episode Brock Silent and the Forest Witch in the outro of that episode. And it's just funny that he uses, um, that Ludicolo uses its teeth to dance in time with him singing uh, Toshiki's Paradise. It's just uh, pretty funny. And then we see that Misty has to stay behind to stop Frillish and Yomask using her Staryu and Psyduck. And of course Psyduck emerged by himself um, to uh, help stop Frillish and Yomask. And Staryu's first appearance was in the episode um, Clefairy and the Moonstone. And its last major appearance was in the episode The Mastermind Mirage Pokemon, with its last minor appearance being in the episode Alola Kanto, where it was used when Ash and the Alola gang travelled um, to Kanto to learn more about Kanto Pokemon. And of course, Psyduck's first appearance was in the episode Hypno's Nap Time, with its last major appearance being in Ash vs Misty, Seaside 1 on 1, which I did a breakdown of, which I will link up in the cards above, so check that out if you haven't already. And its last minor appearance was in the episode A Squad's Worth of Passion, which again, I did a breakdown on, which I will link up in the cards above. However, it doesn't go well for Misty um, stopping Frillish and Yomask, as Yomask sticks its mask on Psyduck's face, making it panic, which is a reference actually to Night at the Nacreen City Museum, in which a Yomask controls Silent by sticking its mask on its face, and Psyduck of course panics and bumps into Staryu, knocking it down. However, um, Frillish and Yomask are still contained by Misty for the time being. Which means Ash runs into Carnivine and Gorgeist and stays behind to stop those Pokemon with the help of his returning Pokemon of Infernape and Harlucha. Now Infernape first appeared as a Chimcha in the episode when the Pokemon Worlds Collide, where it was a part of Paul's team and Ash battled against Chimcha and won with his APOM. However, Paul actually released Chimcha in the episode Glory Blaze, and Chimcha joined Ash's team in the very next episode, the episode Smells Like Team Spirit. And it later evolved into Monferno in the episode Evolving Strategies, when Ash and Paul had a full 6v6 Pokemon battle. After Chimcha defeated Paul's Ursa Ring, it evolved into Monferno. However, it did lose eventually to Paul's Electabuzz. But it then evolved into Infernape in the episode Fighting Aya with Fire. And it evolved um, to save Pikachu, Dawn's Piplup, Barry's Apollyon, and Paul's Electabuzz. And Infernape's last major appearance was in the episode Advice to Go, where it was seen um, trying to fight the legendary Pokemon Moltres. And its last minor appearance was in the episode Heroes Unite, um, where of course Ash returned uh, back to Pallet Town after beating Leon and becoming the Pokemon Champion. And Harlucha's first appearance was in the episode The Forest Champion, in which it joined Ash's team, and its last major appearance was in the episode The Right Hero for the Right Job, where it helped with all of Ash's other Carlos Pokemon and all of Ash's companions and, of course, Alana and his Pokemon in de into defeating Lysander's um, Pokemon to stop, of course, Team Flare destroying Carlos. And its last... Um, minor appearance was in the episode um, Heroes Unite, um, where of course Ash returned home after beating Leon. And with Ash, Infernape and Harlucha having to stay behind to hold off Carnivine and Gorgeist, Ash tells Pikachu to take Mine Junior and go on ahead. Of course, falling into Team Rocket's trap as um, Team Rocket surprises Pikachu, and then Mime Jr. reveals that he's been with Team Rocket this whole time. However, Mime Jr. reveals that he's been, that he's been with Team Rocket this whole time a little too early, and when James fires the net at Pikachu, they actually end up capturing Mime Jr. and not Pikachu. And then James is a bit annoyed, but Mime Jr. pulls the same face to James that he did to um, Ash and the gang to convince them they had um, that he had left Team Rocket um, for James to forgive him for getting trapped in the net, which James, of course, does forgive him. But I think it's just a cool little thing to show that maybe 
James and Ash and the gang aren't so different. But on with the main plan. Team Rocket's Pokemon of Inky, Wubat um, and Surviper, as well as more Pigo as well, but more Pigo isn't um, attacking, gang up on Pikachu. However, Latias is watching all of this unfold in its invisible form and gives Ash a psychic vision of Pikachu being attacked by Team Rocket. Of course, this causes him to break from his battle against Carnivine and Gorgeist to help Pikachu. So Gorgeist fires off a seed bomb, signaling Ash is heading towards them. And Gorgeist's um, seed bomb signal is a reference to Ash's Bulbasaur doing the same with its solar beam um, to summon the Unova Pokemon in the episode The Dream Continues. And Bulbasaur probably has different solar beams to summon all of Ash's different regional Pokemon. But we see that in The Dream Continues, him summoning the Unovan Pokemon. And of course, Ash, Infernape and Halucha arrive just in time to stop Team Rocket from capturing Pikachu. And all of Team Rocket's Pokemon that were stopping Ash and the gang along the way turn up too. And of course, Brock and Misty with their Pokemon um, eventually return too, not long after all of Team Rocket's past Pokemon that were stopping Ash and the gang along the way. And Team Rocket explain their plan to Ash, which they do as Team Rocket's theme song plays, which was a song that was originally released in Pokemon the series X, Y, and Z. Um, and that was kind of just like a theme song. It's not their normal song, but it's a theme song from, of course, series X, Y, and Z. And as they are explaining this plan, as uh, they end, so does the song. And Team Rocket command all their Pokemon to launch a combined attack. However, Ash and his Pokemon dodge it. So the combined attack actually heads for Team Rocket. However, Wabafet manages to reflect it with Mirror Coat, knocking down a tree, which causes the slack off that was in the tree that we saw, that was seen earlier in the episode um, to be thrown into the air. And of course, Ash wanting to save the slack off throws himself into the air and manages to catch the slack off. However, now he is falling, but Latias in its invisible form catches Ash and Slackoff, which is a reference to the episode The Same Moon Now and Forever, um, which I actually did a breakdown on, which I will link up in the cards above, where Latias did the similar thing, managing to catch Ash and Pikachu from falling into a river in that episode. And once Latias returns Ash and the Slack off to the floor, it uncloaks and they can now see Latias. And Ash realises Latias was the one that saved him in, of course, um, the episode um, The Same Moon Now and Forever. And it was the one that he saved in the um, first um, episode of the series, The Winds of Beginning, The Endless Road, which I actually did a breakdown of, which I will link up in the cards above. So check that out if you haven't already. And now Latias has revealed itself, it makes Team Rocket blast off again with a psychic. Even though Team Rocket's Inke and Morpigo shouldn't really be affected as they're part dark types, and dark types aren't affected by psychic moves, but it's the anime, rules about Pokemon types are always a bit wonky. And of course, Team Rocket blast off. However, we stay with Team Rocket, and they come down after their blast off and Team Rocket thinks about why their plan failed and they come to the conclusion of blaming each other, leaving them to disband with all their Pokemon looking on in shock with Jesse, James and Meowth all heading in separate directions. But back to Ash and the gang, Latios shows them a vision of a Latios breaking out of some place. Obviously, it's in trouble as it's had to break out with some force and there is a fire or some destruction going on with that place with Latios having to break out. And this sets up the next episode. And then the outro plays and it is the song Face Forward Team Rocket, which originally debuted as the outro of the episode the Wayward Wabafet in Japan. I don't think it ever got released in England, but um, it was um, the outro of that episode and it is now the outro of this episode. And of course, it just perfectly caps off a Team Rocket outro for an episode that was all about Team Rocket. 
And then as the intro ends, we get a sneak peek of the next episode where we see the Latios storyline play out. But I think this episode was crazy. Um, you probably have seen from just the time of this episode, there was a lot of references, a lot of returning Pokemon. This episode is gonna be long, so I just wanna thank you so much if you've watched to the end. And of course, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this episode. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, also subscribe and share it out. And I will see you in the next one.